ACLU is teaching people how to engage with skill and with respect so that we can address the complex and difficult issues that face us as individuals, our communities, and the world as global citizens. Mass incarceration does impact you, whether you know it or not. And if you don't know it, by the time you leave today, you will know it. You'll understand that. But because if you're here, it means somewhere within your mind, you understand that, hey, I don't know everything about this, but I understand it's a problem, and it's something that I need to take on. I need to tackle it. And we're here to work with you to help tackle that problem. That's why you're here today. And as our wonderful president shared, we created the problem. So we're also the solution. No one else is coming in. The Calvary's not coming to help solve this issue. We need your help. And don't sit here and go, well, the problem's too big for me. That's passing the buck. Everybody can create change. Every single person can create change in society. You just have to find out what small way you can do that. Or big way. Hey, think big too. But you just have to figure out what it is that you can actually do to help impact change in this space. I want you to think about this whole concept of the rise of mass incarceration. Because when we talk about the rise of mass incarceration, what we're really talking about, according to the premise of 13, is the exception to the legislation, which is we can enslave people if it's punishment for a crime. And that still stands today because no one has enacted legislation to remove that. Is that something that this room has the ability to do? I myself was incarcerated for 14 and a half years, three years parole, 17 and a half years in the system. 12 years later, I now stand in a position where I can give back and answer that question, what can I do about it? Initially, I thought I could do nothing. I thought as someone who had been formerly incarcerated that I would not have any power. But luckily, I met somebody, Dr. Renford Reese, political science professor at Cal Poly Pomona, who reminded me the power of one. He talked about the people who've made the most change in the world have always been individuals. It was about their ability to go out into society and care and make a difference. So he challenged me to roll up my sleeves and get to work and that's what I've done. I used to listen to staff, and when I say staff, I'm talking about prison guards, would make the statement, if they build them, you'll fill them. He says, because we'll create new laws that will put you guys back in prison. Because the system is geared to keep you guys here. Initially, there was rehabilitative programs, but then they took them away. They create them because it sounds good to the media and sounds good to the public, but then they slowly start taking this stuff away because they don't want to see the system work. Each state sets its own guidelines and its own laws and its own rules of sentencing. What constitutes a misdemeanor in Georgia might be a felony in California. So when you end up with people mixed together in prisons who have come from different jurisdictions, that's why you see so much disparity because I'm not bound by the federal sentencing guidelines at all. I have full discretion in what I choose to do within the confines of the state law of Georgia. On the strength of what I'm saying is, is that I, I think that it's, it's hard for us to get to a lot of stuff if we don't necessarily adopt the language to actually move us forward. So when you hear people be referring to themselves as uh, formerly incarcerated people, I can remember when they used to refer to us as inmates, convicts, uh, prisoners, and what have you. So when we put the emphasis on people, it, it, it increased the likelihood that somebody interviewing you for a job can actually see you as a person. It, it, it increased the likelihood if somebody stepping on your neck, they might recognize that you're a human being as opposed to those other statuses that you're in. What really, really broke my heart, it wasn't really just about, oh, these poor people inside. It was actually about us poor people outside who are losing out on the opportunity to have these brilliant citizens in our society, and instead we're warehousing them away. And so it was a radically different way of feeling the pain. Because we often talk about, oh, the poor people incarcerated. 
It's actually poor us because we're not able to avail ourselves of the talent and the brilliance that lies behind bars. Uh, I want to thank uh, Claremont Lincoln University and President Eileen Aranda for their leadership uh, in, in, in so many difficult issues, challenging issues such as human trafficking and food deserts. It's the energy of educators and leaders such as you that is going to help us bring about real change.